Let us begin. I think that we have only one order of business, which is to discuss with Peter and all everybody else who's here of what we know about the sewer. Yep. And um, this is Dave, is it? Prickett. Prickett, who has been retained as trust as a trust advisor to tell us a bit about what is needed in order for it to, for the sewer to accommodate the parcel in the back. So you're the star. Okay. You ready? You wanna, We're ready. You want to have everybody introduce themselves um, about who they are, where they're from? We can. Uh, we, most of us it. know everybody who's been here before. Tom, you want to start? I am Tom Forbes. I live at 91 Mill Middle Road. Thank you. 9010 Castle Hill Road. Elaine Markham, 11 Glendale Middle Road. Bill Markham, 11 Glendale Middle Road. I'm Peter Brinsky, Jr., 7A Glendale Middle Road. Okay, and I'm Randy Warner, Chair of the um, Stockbridge Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, Dave Prickett with DPC Engineering. Bruce Auerbach, member of the Attleboro Affordable Housing Trust. <laughs> Liz Wheeler, um, member of the Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, Mark Mills, Cherry Street, a member of the Housing Trust. Amy Manassi, Flightwood. All right. Thank you all for coming. Um, Peter, okay. you've got the floor. We can pass those down. Just please don't read ahead. We will definitely, I will read through the whole thing. Okay. I always hate handing stuff out at work. One for everybody. Okay. Okay. Hello, Jen. Um, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. And this is Jen Ackerman, yeah. who is also a member of the trots. I think everybody's here who's been in one more. Do you have one more? You got one, Jamie. We need one more. Does everybody have a call? Oh, sorry. One more? Yep. Yeah. I have one. You have one. Oh. <laughs> We're good. Right. Okay. All right, so at the last meeting, um, we had a topic come up for the proposal, and um, I was one that just raised a question about the scope of work, which now has led to this meeting, so I'll just start from the top. So this meeting um, is to provide information to the Affordable Housing Trust Committee um, of the existing sewer facilities on Glendale Middle Road. Information and discussion will provide additional knowledge for the Affordable Housing Trust Committee to create and complete a scope of work for the proposed affordable housing trust site, um, sewer site. So first um, we talked about um, maybe just giving a little history on the street. So the, the sewer system on the street now is relatively new. It's the last sewer expansion that we've done in town. Um, it's probably 20-ish years old. Um, the current design, most of the houses on that street, it was determined that we would use low pressure grinder pumps. And these are just some of the points that I wanna point out in case somebody hasn't talked to you about the conditions of the street and you know stuff that maybe the information you don't have. If you have some of this or all of this information, then this will just be a review. But if there's something that stands out um, that you think would be helpful for you and you know getting a, a more accurate um, proposal together, perfect. I don't think it would be a waste of time at all. Um, so the reason why um, we went with the grinder pumps in the long run, well, not me, the town, um, is they have, it was originally gonna be gravity, but there's a lot of ledge. The soil on the street is very wet and um, stuff like that. So it was determined to go with the low pressure grinder pumps, which does sound good and, you know, um, but they'd have a low life expectancy. So I was just wondering you know, is gravity going to be an option? But we'll get into that as we get further down. Um, it's my understanding that when they designed the system, um, they designed it for the existing houses on the street, maybe taking into consideration a few of the building lots. Um, I assume that they looked at the high season, being the summer or the winter, whatever it was in their three to five year study. Um, let's see. Does the original, yes, Please go ahead. Three to five year study. What I'm just assuming that they took some data instead of just didn't go with whatever season that they were doing the proposal. I in. see. Okay. I don't have any of those records of in? what they would do. I was not directly involved, but so far all the information that you, they do have a good, just by way of background, I've worked with the town of Stockbridge for at least 10 years. So 
Um, we've been involved with the evaluation of the sewer system. I have extensive experience with both gravity and those low pressure systems. Mm -hmm. I put everything on a map tonight because uh, often it's near and dear to people's heart uh, when something's going on. So um, we will make sure that we take into account not only the the options for the subject parcel, but ensuring that uh, everyone who already has sewer service, you know, doesn't have anything compromised associated with that. Right, great, excellent. And that's a perfect lead into my next bullet here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, does the original, I don't know if you know this or this might be a point that you look into, does the original 2004 sewer design have the capacity to build in these 20 to 60 bedrooms um, for this project with the possibility of, in my opinion, and this is only my information, of looking at 120 bedrooms with future neighborhood expansion. And what I define as future neighborhood expansion is what Patrick White was referring to last week, and I'm gonna get ahead of myself, so when we get to it, I'll just go over it. Um, that in early 2025, this accessory dwelling unit is gonna be passing in the town of, or in the state of Massachusetts, which in my opinion will allow each resident on the sewer line, if they decide to add an accessory building or in law, you know, whatever that definition of that is at the time, we want to make sure that there's still capacity for that in that pump station. We don't want to invest all of our um, options into one project and then as laws change, we don't want the, the um, residents of the village of Glendale to then be stuck, you know, not being able to take advantage of something that's supposed to be helping them. Okay. You, uh, that's a terrific point, which I think it definitely needs to be, we need to figure out how to, how the, what you do gives us, the, gives us the information because you're exactly right you all will be eligible to add a unit to your house mm -hmm. as of next year. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a... It's small. It'll be small, but still it, it'll be another bathroom. Sure. Right. So if you think of, you know, I don't have the exact number, but if there's another 40 or 50 houses on that pump station throughout the, the village and the different streets, whether it's Gravity Now or any of the wastewater that goes to that, that would be the capacity that we would have to look at. That's an excellent point. Yeah. We don't have any idea. How, do you? How many? Uh, maybe Don knows. Um, I, I just got your... I, um, what are you talking about? <laughs> the whole uh, meeting is only pass, about... Pass, pass, pass to Adolstown. Yeah. This is oh, what yeah. Peter... Yeah. Peter's prepared a presentation uh, for the meeting. Do you know about how many homes the pump station in Glendale supports, basically. Oh, I know, and I, I think Dave knows that also. The pump station isn't the issue with sewers. We have the capacity in that pump station uh, much more than what we have right now. We, we can handle. So that's not an issue, the pump station. Let me, let me just back up. Um... Let me make it a little bit more fair for Don. So what we're talking about is um, the capacity of the pump station for what is proposed from this project as 20 to 60 bedrooms. And what I brought up, um, the, the first major bullet that's indented is um, Patrick White brought up in the last meeting that in early 2025, Massachusetts is going to uh, be passing a law for auxiliary dwellings. So theoretically, and I know everybody won't do it, but I think we have to plan for everybody to do it if we're looking at a proposed or a plan, um, that every house slash building lot that's still buildable that uses that station as an outlet for their, for their, for their gray water, sewer water, um, could, could add one or two bedrooms per existing house that's there now. So instead of looking at 20 or 60, in realistic, we could be looking at 60 to 120. I just estimated 50 houses. If I'm way off, I have no idea. Um, but I think that that's the capacity at a peak season that we should be looking at. That was just my point. As you know, because of that low pressure line, that three inch line, anything that could be additional to 
flows, that line is going to have to be changed. And that when we're talking about the plan across the street from us, uh, that's going to be a big issue because yeah. of the fact that um, the three inch line was, as we all know, designed for our street. Mm -hmm. And if the, um, and Dave's going to be obviously looking at that whole situation, uh, even if there are thoughts of maybe putting a, uh, a small collection and pump station at the site, uh, to me, that's not going to be a good idea mm -hmm. because we have worked, um, we've had issues before with one of our pump stations with odor. Yes. And I don't think anyone in this room wants to have the wrath of the Glendale Middle Road residents coming to them about odor. Correct. But and that's the, one of the issues. Yes. Which is terrific. Peter just brought up something that I'll speak for myself I hadn't thought about, is in next year, everybody that's on the street is going to be entitled to add a to add an apartment, which is one, let's say, probably at least one bedroom, I mean, one bathroom per house. So if you if we did nothing, the capacity of the street would be increased or would need to be increased for everyone to comply with the law by a, a it, it sounds like nobody can build an apartment can com, be able to comply or to to take advantage was a better way to express yeah, that's it that's what they would have to come up with i'm not sure how many people it's it's available but i'm not sure how many people on our street and Christian Hill Correct. be doing that. Well, we don't, yeah. Well, we don't know that, but, yeah. but you got to look at it. As yeah, you, I think you, we you have. Can't, you can't plan it. You can't plan it assuming that everybody's not going to do it. You, I think you need to plan it for the worst case scenario, which is everybody doing. How many houses are on, uh, does that pump station currently support? I guessed at 50-ish, maybe 60. That, I wasn't sure. I wouldn't think that much. That That's pump correct. station is is not going to be the limiting factor of this no. analysis for sure. So, I mean, you put in a four inch force main is kind of the smallest pump station that you would build today. Mm -hmm. In reality, that could sometimes serve up to, you know, several hundred homes. OK, so that won't be the issue for sure. The three inch pipe that goes across the river and the tracks. Yeah. Um, but the low pressure sewer system that's there right now. Um, I would take the approach or try to use the analogy. It's kind of like a suit coat for a man. So, you know, you, you fit it to the person um, and you can make some adjustments in it as I get bigger. I yep. let it out a little bit, but low pressure sewers are not infinitely expandable. They have a finite capacity. So one of the things we would do to start is build a hydraulic model. You all have E1 pumps. I've already spoken with, with Tony about that. Um, see where the pressure points are in the existing system, and then slowly start to add on. Um, you talked about these ADUs. We could kind of model adding in those ADUs, and then we can model the, the effects of different size developments yep. on a subject parcel. Yep. I would just hate to see um, as town dollars, no matter what project it's going to, put a sewer in 20 years ago, which is the, la the latest expansion, put a modification into that system. And then within, God, it was almost like when Patrick White was talking, you know, when the law is passed, we almost got to react. And that could be a lot of additional tax dollars if we had to replace that three inch main or wherever we would have to change it for people to be able to um, have access to the benefit of the law. That's, yep. That was my only point. Yep. Randy, I have a question. Um, you know, the state law is supposed to encourage more housing and ADUs is a sort of a basic step to try to do that. Would they have passed the law or whatever regulations they write that would force towns to undertake uh, huge expenses to have new sewer line to accommodate a few ADUs? I mean, that's a big burden to put on a town, uh, you know, which could end up costing as much as the housing costs. And I just don't know if that was taken into account of whether the new ADU you law can force towns to start digging up their streets and laying in new pipes. So mm -hmm. I, I hate to sound contrary, but 
Do you really think that they even took that into consideration in passing? There's no way. <laughs> I don't know. My idea is it came come up here pretty quickly. With I understand that. But I can promise you that the legislature did not take that into consideration when they basically passed this ADU. But I think low pressure lines are probably a last resort. And unfortunately, that's the, the path that we have in yeah. this we region of town. Have much have access uh, gravity. And then you're just looking at up yeah. a pump station yeah, instead of we, a pipe. The reason why we did low pressure in, uh, in Glendale Middle Road is uh, cost. Mm -hmm. um, gravity sewer is much more expensive. Uh, and we were not under the gun, but we obviously wanted to be financially uh, responsible for the town of Stockbridge. And um, as a matter of fact, the pump station was going to go down the bottom of the hill before all the railroad tracks. And that was changed because some of the residents didn't want it there and, uh, because there could have been some more uh, Castle Hill could obviously at that time, uh, they could all be gravity. And um, I went to the every homeowner and asked them if they would be willing to do a grinder pump, low pressure um, instead. And they all agreed that they would uh, uh, accept the additional uh, expense for the sewer system. So that's why that's a low pressure, uh, even to Castle Hill, which doesn't seem to be that you need it, but it's all low pressure. And that's why it's because of expense. For what it's worth, I would have come up with the same recommendation 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, it's probably 20 to 40 cents on the dollar for the low pressure system versus the gravity. Yeah. I personally wish I was a little bit more educated back then or... <laughs> Being an engineer, we understand we want to make things uh, less expensive and more, you know, so they can sell more. Not the sewer system per se, but the pumps just don't seem to be having the life that we were proposed at the time. And, and, and a lot again, of us are on our right second right. or third. And there's, you know, you're talking five, six thousand dollars a pop. Make sell people eight to twelve years is typical life expectancy. Yeah, kind of pumps. Yours. The last guy told me five to seven, so I like your number better. <laughs> but just out of curiosity, has everybody here who lives on the road had to replace their grinder so far? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Not us. No. Twice. You haven't had to. No. And have you? Yeah, mine. Mine. I think, like I said, within my little circle, I think mine went the longest, and that was ten years. Okay. Well, yes, I did have to and your mine. parents have replaced it. Yeah, yeah, time. and yeah, but, but and so have uh, Jackie and Nikki. But in fairness of E1 <coughs> pumps, uh, we did our research on E1 pumps. Mm -hmm. We talked to uh, residents of Otis around the Otis Reservoir, and they were the ones that were very high on E1 pumps. And we also had a presentation at the Old Town Hall of several companies that came in and did a presentation and a video, uh, which was pretty interesting. And um, everyone agreed that E1 pumps were, at the time, E1 pumps were the one way to yeah. go. I think they knew. I agree, <laughs> they, they still are the Cadillac. I agree too. I mean, I've done my research also and I agree with that. It's just, they don't seem to be lasting as yeah. long. Just out of curiosity, <clears throat> would you, if, if that decision were here today, would you want the, the pump system? Or this E1, is that? I guess I will I'll speak. speak. <laughs> I, I know, I followed it very closely and Donnie's absolutely correct. It was gonna add a tremendous cost um, pounding and drilling through ledge at the top of our hill heading down towards the river. It was gonna add hundreds of thousands of dollars so I guess, you know, if you're paying for it in a pump or you're paying for it in taxes or a project that, you know, would prevent a, a future sewer project from happening that much quicker, I guess I would have, would have still sided with the pumps. I just, I thought the pump was like a furnace. You put it in and it's there for, you know, at least 20 or 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> I thought with the pump station located by the railroad tracks, it was going to be considerably more expensive than where it is now. And for the whole system, because that, that way, the whole center of Glendale would have to come over to our side of the tracks. 
No, they would have no. still had the other oh, pump stations. Oh, you would have still had too. two pump stations? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So then we had two pump stations instead of one. Yeah, the other pump station down by the railroad tracks would have been there if we were gravity. Because then that would have right. taken the, it to the other pump station by okay. the firehouse. Oh, all right. Okay. <clears throat> Tracy, you have a pump too? On You live on Castle? I do, but no, I have a septic stuff. Oh, you didn't hook in. That was still an option for everybody to have a septic. I said it was brand new. We had just built. Mm -hmm. And what we did was yeah. anyone who uh, they were required to hook up to the sewer system. Uh, however, uh, if you submit an application, which I'm sure you did, if your system is up to date mm -hmm. and you don't want to hook up, uh, that's perfectly legitimate. Most people hooked up to the sewer system. Yeah. But again, if you're spending ten thousand dollars on a new septic system, oh, you just probably want to. There yeah. yeah, I didn't think the town was allowing repairs and work on septic systems. Yeah. I know that when yeah. when we moved into our place in two thousand and two, um, the prior owners had expanded and the septic system couldn't maintain capacity, um, and it basically backed up into our home. And when we basically uh, approached the town about expanding the sewer se the septic system, they said, no, you have to tie into town sewage. We're not allowing septic systems to be upgraded anymore. And so do you have sewage on? I'm on sewage now. Oh. It wasn't when we bought that, when we got the house in 2002, hmm. but. And where do you live? On Interlaken Crossroad. Mm -hmm. Forgive me. Your presentation, Ready to keep going? Is, but that that was a huge new point. Yes, yeah, and it's we'll have a, to definitely take a look at that. I think I don't think that was incorporated in our proposal, but I think we have to. We're trying to work in good faith here to help the community yeah. out as a whole. So yeah, it sounds like you want to. Well, we have to provide information, I mean, I think, and they're looking for answers. It seems yeah. like a transparent discussion. So oh, absolutely. But I I think that uh, I'm not even sure. It's such a Awakening because mm -hmm. it's all so new, and the yeah. fact that Probably that not. impacts the whole village, the the whole whole village. gravity or low pressure. Yeah, right, thank you. Okay, um, and I guess I just had a few questions that I just came up on my own, which I'm sure you have in there, but I just want to go over them because they are on the sheet. Is um, the existing system I know at least on Glendale Middle Road has a manhole that does flushing once a year so that you know if any build up or whatever so that it prevent like a preventative maintenance versus a uh, um you know just doing it um so I'm wondering if that's in the proposal if if there'll be something because there's going to be a pump station somewhere that will it be flushed or I mean you have 11 clean out structures maybe 13 if you count the two over by the railroad so I mean this is Again, if I was a homeowner here, yeah, I I'm I'm just asking. Either. I get that. Um, no, 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 no. I'm but, a, yep. any alternative that we look at, um, yep. you know, we're, we don't do work for developers. We just do work for municipalities. So you know, we would only recommend something to this group that we would recommend to one of our municipal clients. Sure. It's going to stand the test of time. Yep. And where will, will it be a new line on the street? And will it be... Um, I'm assuming that it will be either next to, above, or somewhere near the existing one. I don't know if it was. I think you have three alternatives that you could look at. Um, one, you'd start by looking at whether the existing low pressure system has the capacity to accommodate a proposed development, mm -hmm. as well as what you brought up this evening, possible ADUs. Mm -hmm. um, that would be one. Two would be, um, you know, a, a separate pumped system from the subject parcel over to the, the Glendale pump station, presumably through a separate force main. Mm -hmm. um, and then a third one, which, you know, doesn't make a lot of sense is, you know, the whole area would be gravity. I think it's going to be cost prohibitive. But when you do these mm -hmm. analyses, it's obviously nice to understand what it could be. Comparing to kind yeah. of build the box, if you will. Yep. So, I may be missing something that you might have thought of. No, uh, but... no, no, you're right on that. And, and the thing of it is, if we were talking about lines, and let's say you have to put a new sewer line in, you have to put a new water line in. Uh, as you know, on our street, one side of the street is sewer, the other mm -hmm. side is water. Um, 
where are you going to put those lines? Are you going to put them down the center of the, the center of the street? Uh, that that's something else to think about. Plus, you have that crossing on the bridge, yep. which is very costly, as we know oh, already. Sure. Uh, you have to put sleeves sleeves under the railroad tracks, and we pay. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but we pay the um, the railroad line two hundred fifty dollars a year each line that we have that goes under the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. So that's an additional expense, also. Um, you know, we won't talk about water because we're talking about sewer tonight, tonight here. But the water system is also something that uh, we all know on the street that that's a real issue. Mm -hmm. so, but again, Dave, we're here just with the sewer. Yep. I wanted a question. Not much. You mentioned water. I don't want to sidetrack us too much. But could housing back there have a uh, pump? Have uh, wells? I defer to the whole water to, thing. To buff on that one, I, I haven't been involved in it, and quite honestly, here in the best hands with your water superintendent here, he's well versed in that. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't believe so. No. No. A lot of people in town have wells, though, don't they? Uh, yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah. A fair amount. But we um, the, back when the town was um, exploring well locations, and they did a lot of drilling around. I don't think they hit much water. Yeah. What we did was on our street. We went to several locations, uh, <laughs> Inter Lake Inn. We did one on Bo Lower Bowers. Yep. We were down in the woods there uh, on Swan's property. Every property that we went to, uh, it wasn't well that we needed, with the exception of the Swan's property. Uh, it was like a geyser there, which we were sort of excited about. But what happened is the water was terrible. It was uh, sure. not only terrible, but it stunk. So we had, so but what we did was we went through all these things because we wanted to do that. If we could right. get a well, then we wouldn't have to put in a million dollar treatment. Plant. Right. Uh -huh. So that's what we did. We always try to uh, you know, do the best well, thing as an investigator. Yep. I guess just the question is that should the recommendation be to to install a new um, a new type of system which would require a new pipe is it is there anything on the street that prohibits the, the installation of another pipe a third pipe in the street i i haven't dug into this far enough yet i mean it's okay. we put multiple utilities in urban streets you know more so than this so i i suspect that they're there could be a pathway, but I, I'd like to develop the the conceptual layouts and then, you know, analyze with the group the pros and cons and terrific condition with, you know, budget level yeah, costs. I think another thing, too, is, is we're, regardless of what's going on in that street, uh, afterwards with the paving or whatever, because we all know in certain parts of towns where they've done this type of thing, you know, pavement, you know, everything sinks and you have the bumps and the craziness. Uh, that obviously everyone will have to look at also is how that's going to be the, the finished coat. Yeah. Anywhere we look at new pipes in town right of way, our approach is, you know, we we incorporate the, the trench repair with a winter over and then a, usually a milling and overlay. It's what most towns typically require. Yeah. I don't want to patch on my street if it was... Yep. Yeah. You're doing good, Don. You're I told everybody not to read ahead, and I know you because I, I just know you. And I know you're not reading ahead, but that means we're on the same page. And that's even better. <laughs> so the next two bullets was the pipe boring underneath the railroad and the insulated pipe that goes under the river. So I know that those are um, two big things that um, definitely have to be, um, if it's needed for this project included, because those are probably big dollar items. Um, move on to the next one, um, pump station located on 183. Um, again, we already talked about the capacity, the possible different capacity. I repeated it because I thought that it was, um, that important and that new, um, that maybe it wasn't, um, thought about. Um, again, um, so the third bullet down, will the sewer pump station 
Will there be a sub sewer pump station needed on Glendale Middle Road to get the sewage to 183? So I guess from a layman's standpoint, I'm kind of thinking, okay, if you've got some units up there, say four or five, whether they're the single family style or anything, I'm picturing, you know, maybe you're doing gravity to something and then pumping. Um, because I don't think it's realistic that we're running low pressure lines from every building down to the existing road because it would just look like a manifold almost. Um, so I'm just wondering if the pump station, if one's needed, and two, if there's been thought to a subject that's already been brought up, we, we've got, you know, noise with the generator. We know we've got odor that was on multiple um, pump stations that we've had in the past. We've had neighbors um, complain about it. Um, complain might not be the right word. Voice their concerns that led to a result. <laughs> um, um, Can I, this is a new thing. So is is that what happens with all pump stations? Is they smell? No, it just we have one pump station in Glendale that, that had an issue, and um, we contracted the engineer in the taking care of the issue. So it doesn't mean that if you put a pump station no, in, you've got no, odor. No, but possibility. But you are taking risk. The possibilities could be so. That's you know. Just, but if but if it happens, is there a solution? Yes. Okay. So that's that's not a long term problem. It's a no. That's error. something that just to be thought at because it's money. Mm -hmm. um, another one that would be added on to that that just popped into my mind is I know we've camouflaged all of the pump stations that we currently have in town because of an eyesore, you know, to fit in with sure, either we... project or whatever. But I think that was a second thought with the original project because everything was planted afterwards. So I just want to make sure that it's in the original original stuff on um, moving forward with this one. I need to go back. Do pump stations produce odors? Usually I mean, the odors are generally at the end of the discharge pipe. So usually the odors are at the end of the pipe coming out of the pump station. So wherever it's pumping water from at the bottom of the hill to the top. Yeah. So realistically, your neighborhood with the low pressure sewer probably has quite a bit of odor potential in it when it daylights over at the Glendale pump station. That would be the biggest. And that's the one we're referring yeah. to. Yeah. But typically. But if you have one up there that you're going to dump in. Themselves on a gravity system do not have odors associated with, unless there's a, like a real high strength wastewater from a non-residential development, like a brewery or, mm -hmm. you know, bakery or something like that. Um, again, usually it's at the end of the pipe that is the, the monitoring point, but there are, yeah. Chemical measures that you can put into place are commonplace now for odor control. So, oh, yeah, dioxide, things like that. So, yeah. so it's not it's a some, given that if any no, change. No, I, I mean, Gooder Tree, we're fine. We have one on the end of Gooder Tree pump there also. I heard the word daylight. Do you mean that when this wastewater goes in, there's a place where it's visible? No. Well, it fills a tank, right? Or, or, or terminology. Uh, but it does fill a tank that has a cover on it, like a septic tank, yep. that is above ground and does have access to the atmosphere. Yep. Yeah. And when the wastewater has a access to the atmosphere, you don't get the odors. It's when it's in a closed conduit and it goes anaerobic. The oxygen's gone yep. and it gets pretty pretty right pretty fast. Mm -hmm. Is the one at the end of Park Street mostly um, gravity that feeds that or is it low pressure? No, that's that's it's all gravity. Yeah, so I'm thinking gravity doesn't have as much denseness to it. It, it just it's oxygenated so yeah. you don't get the odors. Yeah. yeah. Interesting lessons. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Um so we'll look at that. Um Again, because I put the bullet, we've already dragged this to death, but if I had the time to write it, I might as well say it. So I said, I don't think the people will be, it'll be very popular amongst neighbors in the whole village of Glendale if they learn that the pump station sewer capacity is maxed out due to a single project, especially when the new accessory dwelling bill becomes law in early 2025. The accessory dwelling bill has the potential to add significant um, bedroom capacity to the Glendale, from the Glendale Village to the sewer pump station located next to the firehouse, which would be the one that we utilize with now. Also, because it now and will be. So this is now. the point that we've discussed. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
let's see the next one. I just wanted to put this in because um, I know we spent a lot of time with the research on pretty much every project in town. So it's kind of like a boilerplate comment, but the proposal needs to include quality components that's consistent with the existing sewer that's on the street. Um, last bullet is I- I'm gonna stop you again. What, a, what does quality components mean? I would say, as we referred to, um, we brought in a bunch of different pump suppliers and we determined that E1s were the best recommendation to the residents. Oh. Uh, any type of components that we look at for a okay. pump station or a, you know, anything that we have to add to it to help the smell or the odor, whatever, that we should really look at a quality um, solution instead of a quick solution. By the best, could I? I wouldn't say buy the best because somebody advertises the best. It may not be the best, but we need to do our research and trust the engineering firms that we that we hire that they'll do their yeah. The town's put a lot of work into standardizing their pump stations. Mm -hmm. When we did the one over on Park Street, they standardized on submersible pump stations, lowest visibility, uh, light submersible pumps, very high efficiency. Again, longest lasting. Anything yep. in wastewater is not going to live as long as, as something outside of that environment. Um, but, you know, cat, Kohler, generators, I mean, yep. everything that the town's put in either with us or with previous consultants has all been uh like top notch yep. yeah there are some communities that we go to and i cringe oh, when i sure. see some of the equipment this exactly. is not this is not one of them though you should be pleased with the infrastructure that you have as a community oh i am i am to, to date absolutely um so looking at your preliminary plan do you think that a pump station will be needed just off the cuff, no, no, not holding into, or you just haven't even really looked at it yet. All I did was take the uh, the record plans from okay. that project you mentioned and laid it on a map. The next step is um, uh, Tony will get me the tie cards for each house so I can pinpoint the grinder pumps, um, identify elevations of all the pumps, build a hydrostatic model, start there. Okay. Um, I would encourage you as you were describing a lot of details that you're worried with the finished product. I would look at our initial task here to try to identify the alternatives, mm -hmm. make sure that there's one that will work technically, you know, and sure. kind of use that as a launch point that if it moves forward, then the group collectively might take a deeper dive on some of the finer, you know, design elements of uh, what color it's going to be and how many arborvitaes yeah, yeah. and all those. Yeah, I'm not worried about the, the color and the arborvitaes, but um, I just want to make sure, and I don't want to speak for the committee because I'm just a resident, um, but I think that they definitely need to have a real a, a real number, you know, out of the gate so that they can make a decision, you know, one, is it is this project cost effective um, as it pertains to the sewer? Because that's only one tentacle out of probably four or five that we're really looking at. So I don't want to i use an analogy. I don't want to buy, get a one square foot box if we've got enough stuff to put in a 10 square foot box. Um, so, and I know you can't pinpoint it right down to, you know, exact, but it should be you in a ballpark some, and have a contingency added to it. Kind of number for us, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's my gut yeah. feel. If you said I have to have an answer right now is I'd say that this low pressure system has probably limited capacity for everything that's been described. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree. Yeah. But I'm not. But I'm not an expert. <laughs> the numbers will be the numbers. We'll go through it. Of course, it and... you know me, there's always that water issue. Right. That, um, you know that, that that's an issue. All right. We have <clears throat> gone to the water people first. And so maybe you could give us some, those of you who know those things better than we do, um, and, and do have a sort of a working number to improve the water system. Baseline. A baseline working number. Okay. Yeah. But that that included it was predicated upon three hundred and fifty dollars a foot to get yeah. water lines in. Right. And and that would have given enough it's my understanding that that improvement would give enough water on the street so all of your houses would have yeah. fire suppression. Yeah, that would be an eight inch line. Not we have a six inch line now, and uh, under the river is an eight inch sleeve that was put there after the bridge from the river. So from 183 to the river, we have to put an eight inch line and eight inch line in the other way. Uh, 
go under the tracks and up, up the road. Because right now, there's uh, our capacity is uh, with that six inch line, we have 350 gallons per minute. Uh, that's why our cap on the hydrant is red mm -hmm. because it's either 500 gallons a minute or less. And um, we have 72 pounds of pressure, which is fine for household use, but certainly not for any kind of budget. And as we know, and everybody knows also, the fire trucks can pump from 12 to 1,500 gallons yeah, a minute. 1,500 to 2,000. There you go. So uh, we found that out now the fire that we had. On the no, I don't, we don't have a single truck that's less than 1,500 gallons a minute. So, but I just want to clarify, because I heard your question a little bit different than Donnie answered, and I could be the one that didn't hear it correctly. It's my understanding that if they run a new eight inch line from 183 or wherever the water source is to this project, it's going to stop at the project. It's not going to continue down the street to reconnect with Cherry Street. So we'll still have the old pipe in front of the majority, at least half of the street that has all of the 50% reduction in ID. So it won't allow the flow to be there. The pressure might be there, but the volume may not be. Let me tell you, it's, it's the uh, area of least resistance is where the flow is going to go. Right. So that would be with the new pipe, so, right? Yeah. Because so, this is not something I understand well. I'm going to ask the question again. Right now, you have what seven hundred and fifty pounds of pressure. What what three hundred and fifty? Seventy two pounds at at your faucet. Seventy two. Put <laughs> this six inch line. Yes. Okay. So. Which is fine for household use. Right, but somebody's house burned down because the fire. There wasn't adequate yeah. water on your street yeah. to save the house. That seems yeah. like unacceptable to me as a town. Well, we got, that's one of the things where we are going to be looking at our next meeting uh, as to where our next move is to um, do some um, infrastructure work. And you guys have been doing upgrades around town. Doing, I mean, we that's, just- That's a big, great pride in yeah. that because that's what we do in this town. We upgrade uh, our sewer system, we yep. upgrade our, our water system. Uh, I think Mike said to me today that our water line that we have on Glendale Middle Road was, uh, was put in 1910. Yeah. So <laughs> this this yeah. is where we're starting wow. to talk about um, replacing those. Instead of expanding our sewer system, we want to do uh, uh, kind of catch up on. We have issues that we want to take care of first, and that's going to be our priority. Okay, so, but it sounds like it's a six-inch line right now. And it, to provide adequate pressure, which it sounds like 1,500. Our, our, our trucks currently pump 1,500 to 2,000 gallons a minute. But it would only go up to 500 in the street. Is that, that's what you were saying, correct? No, our, our no. street right now, we only have 300. Red, red cap and the hydra. That's all we have. Yeah, red cap. Oh, okay. It means 500 or less. 500 or less. Tells you a maximum yeah. 500 gallons a minute. So just right around town and see how many we've got that are red. So, but a lot. I'd like to clarify. So the fire hydrant that's sitting in front of my house that had no pressure or no volume in it to put the fire out of the house that was next to my house, mm -hmm. the water line, the new water line won't go that far no, if it stops at the project. Right so now, right to answer now. your question, no. half, the people, half the people will still, well, from my house all the way to the golf course, Bridge and down Cherry Street a little bit will still be the old line. Actually, but the last is. house on it would probably be mine and possibly uh, the Demolinos across the street. Yeah. And maybe but, when we're talking possibly. about design and everything like that, mm -hmm. put, a, put a hydrant at the at the beginning of that entrance. Well, right. I think we'd have to, yeah. So you have a 10 inch, I'm sorry, an eight, eight, eight inch right. hydrant. Yes. Which but, is what we need. Which is adequate to get the 1,500 to 2,000. No, you need a 12-inch line for that. Yeah. yeah. Be aggressive. So wait a minute. Art said, okay, but you said that the pumping. Our, our fire trucks pump 1,500 to 2,000 gallons a minute. Yeah. That's what the pumps are. That's the maximum. They can do less. Oh, well, again, they can oh, do God. less. 
Yeah, and, and these fire hydrants with the red thing are 500 or less. Correct. We just have to get over. You have to get over 500, 500 and you, you can save houses. I mean, uh, it's in simple. It's, yes. In, or, in order to get, you know, 1,500 to 2,000, you need a 12 inch main. Okay. That's. And there's not a lot of 12 inch mains on our town. We have 10 inch mains. Right. Okay. So when we replace Main, our lines, I think Main Street is the only one that's 12 inch. And then Church, Church Street, we just put a line in. I believe that's, right. that's 10 inch, 183 uh, from the mechanical garden. That's a new 10 inch one. Yeah. But didn't you say that you're already looking at the water on the on the Glendale Middle Road? It, no, it, I'm saying no. that we're, we will be talking about uh, dish, different roads in our town that we want to put some needle pipes in. And would that include Glendale Middle Road? There are, there's other roads. Yeah, there's a lot yeah, of other yeah, roads. Really a small drive around and see the red cats. Right. They're all over the place. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> so really, we're talking about eight inch. If you replace it, you wouldn't put an eight inch. You'd put ten, right? Put an eight. No, not necessarily. Uh, How I, do you I, make that decision? Yeah, but I, you know. An eight inch line. I would think you'd likely put in an eight. I mean, it's not going to change the pressure. It's just going to allow you to pull more water. It's going to allow more volume. volume. Yeah. Yep. You know, we don't need, I mean, the pressure is fine right now. You don't want, you want to be between, I don't even know what you said, but 75 and 100 at the most, or all of us put pressure reducers on our meters. <laughs> but we do have other places in town where the flow is under 500, but the pressure is not that great either. So smaller. We have good pressure, but not a lot of flow. There are other places that don't have good flow or pressure. And it's probably because our pipe's so old and they eroded in. So you know, because we have a six inch pipe, but we know, probably only ours, have three and a half inches on the inside. Longer, but we got good pressure. Right. But if they don't have good pressure or pipes. flow, you know, remember we got a hundred year old pipe, you know, if, 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 if they it's you know, nope. probably three and a half now. <laughs> Sounds like there's room for improvement, but in terms of in terms of priority, what is your, your criteria for picking the streets that get attention right uh, now? Recommendations by the water <coughs> and sewer uh, superintendents. They're the ones that are working every day with this, and then when we get to the point where we need to get an engineer, we'll do that. But uh, right now, it's uh, we're talking to them. We have reports also. But we know Mike and Tony have been there for years. They know every street and what needs to be done. So therefore, do you have a ranking for Glendale Middle Road? No, we don't have anything yet. We haven't talked about it. Sounds like you should be making some noise about Well, I mean, I, I think I think we, we have, but I think it's it. just um, they've talked about it for a long time. Like we talk about sewer expansion for a long time and it's a priority. I think it comes down to money. It's just not an, a bottomless pocketbook that, you know, unless we want to, well, I guess if it's a bottomless pocketbook, none of us will be able to afford the taxes, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's priorities. We really look for grant money. And uh, lots of times if we had designed for a system, uh, what we like to do is uh, have that design in place so that when there's money is available, uh, it's called show. Right. right. And uh, we we won a lot of contracts uh, just because of that. Money becomes available. Other towns don't have the design, and they're not shovel ready. We have two or three that we have done through the years shovel ready, and we've had a very good uh, rate. Uh, yep. So it's really worked in our favor. Do you have any shovel ready projects right now? No. So you're deciding. We haven't prioritized that anymore. To, to we're do sort that. Of drawing back, we, we've done all these other things and we're sort of giving the town a break for a while. Mm -hmm. The town's got other issues that they may have to. Right. And we got a school it's, coming up too. That, and as that directly impacts this project, is uh, the Glendale Middle World Bridge. So the price tag has come in between estimated between seven point seven five million and eight point five million to replace that bridge. Um, 
Is that one on lane right now, Michael? One lane right now. Um, and, you know, there will have to be discussions of whether or not that bridge, depending on traffic flows and the rest that we've looked at, and then depending on the location of the fire department and the rest is whether or not that bridge should be restored, removed. Two of the options that are available. You can't remove that bridge. <laughs> That's what I would say. What's that? What makes you think you can remove that bridge? Close it permanently. I think they're just talking based on cost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so now cost of that bridge is more important than somebody else's house, life, safety? That's what you're telling me. No, that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, it is. Your proposal now is for a, a fire station somewhere 183, 102 corridor, correct? Yes. So that means everybody on the west side of the river can have good coverage. How are you going to get to my house? You have to go all the way around. Because you're talking about closing the, the Stocker Station. That's, you're talking so about, so without trust me, I've been to the meeting, you know, I know. we know it's being discussed. Right. So now our fire protection is going to suffer greatly. You think that's fair? What about the thousands of people all over the community that use that bridge? Not just the residents of Glendale. Is that fair to them? So what I'm saying is, all right, so. Uh, right, is that fair? Well, what, you, what you're asking me to say is just say what you'd like to hear. Or I can say that you have to explore all options because if we're gonna build a fire station, if we're gonna build potentially a new school, if we're gonna build a new bridge, if we're gonna build other new bridges, at some point, decisions have to be made on what money will be spent where. And I'm not saying, it won't be my decision, it will be a town decision as to what to do, but you, I'm just laying out that you now have a bridge that could be costing, most likely let's just use the middle number, which would be $8 million, an $8 million structure that might need to be replaced. At some point it will be closed if no repairs are made to it, it's down to one lane and as the underneath issues continue to happen, the bridge will be closed within so many years. Is that simply what happens? They lower the ratings, lower the ratings, and then close the bridge. The one at the end of my show. So we're going to be fake. We've done the first step, which is the feasibility. So I'm just pointing it out. I'm just pointing out that decisions are going to have to be made. And yes, some prioritization will have to come in over which projects are moving to the front, which ones are moving back, and what will happen. And no, no action at all will result in the bridge being closed eventually. So. <laughs> Three options, I guess, are do nothing, eventually the bridge will be closed. One option is removal of the bridge, and the other one is rest restoring the bridge. Just putting out the options. I'm not saying about, which one. What about Tuckerman? The Tuckerman was already decided in town meeting, and it's it's in Chapter 85 review right now, and is going to be fully rebuilt within the next few years. Has, has anybody done a study on a traffic that goes over those bridges as far as the commercial traffic because glendale middle road is restricted to commercial traffic i get woke up every morning with the mail truck slapping all the trees going down through there's been semis going both ways on that road and they don't fit they're taking trees. Wow. So I think maybe with the <clears throat> bridges the way that they are, something should be done about the commercial heavyweight traffic that keeps occurring on that road before somebody takes the bridge out accidentally. And the, and the, that heavyweight, those those overweight trucks, mm -hmm. basically heavyweight. reduce the lifespan of those bridges, just like the one I, at the end of my street that goes into 183, I've actually which is now closed and will never be reopened for traffic. Bridge because right. the semi you'll, you'll makes cars, the full What's that? Bridge, 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 bridge. Yes. to make the corner. Are there signs there? Yes, there is. Yeah, yeah. There's way restrictions. Yeah, the yeah. They, the yeah, they pay. Or... They pay a lot of attention to those signs when yeah. they come through there, don't they? Well, <laughs> it, it'll it'll only take one guy. Oh, I know. Getting fined and him on the CB saying they're enforcing it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of traffic on 
Yeah, it's, since we hmm. we moved there, it's kind of more. Yeah, it was all your best. Have you ever looked at the trees heading towards 183? They're current <laughs> 90 degrees because the semis are slamming them, breaking branches off, and they don't care. It's a company truck. Yeah, they don't care. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to try to rein back into this meeting. Yes, yeah, so I, I got a, a little. I got a volleyball game for my niece to get to. <laughs> Where? Um, up in Lenox. Well, yeah. Um. So the last um, bullet that I had is um, I think we definitely should, and Donnie had brought it up earlier. Um, talk to the highway superintendent based on you know where we're putting the stuff in the road if we're. Hopefully we're not patching that we're um, fixing or grinding or whatever, um, because it's definitely been my experience um, with projects in town that patches do historically crack and additional road maintenance, which then relates right into somebody else's budget um, in the future um, for replacing um, some defects. So I think the proposal needs to include the cost related to prep and finish of the road service, which um, based on the requirements that the highway superintendent would have. And that's all I have. So hopefully um, there was some good information brought in. The discussion seemed to be um, very informational and hopefully it'll help you if anything was overlooked. Um, not not as at your fault, but just, you know, as a, you know, different town that you're working in or a different project that you're working on. and. Hopefully, we can come up with a good proposal. It's great context. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. Yeah. Peter, yes. thank, thank you, you very, very much. Very oh, much. This welcome. is very thoughtful. Very thoughtful presentation. Thank you. Thank you. We should be so lucky to have good, <laughs> good information. Would you like to say anything? Uh, quite honestly, I think I've been pretty candid along the way relative to, you know, what our scope and lens is for this project and we won't have all of the answers at the end of this phase, but I think you'll have enough answers to make bigger decisions relative to the path of your project and preservation of existing resources and everything. Yes, I understand it. What's there is um, just about adequate for the housing, the housing that it serves. Is that fair? Probably pretty close. It'll depend on the elevation changes, right? So these pumps all have their positive displacement pumps, meaning they can push wastewater against different heads, uh, pressures. Um, the cap is when you get to a certain pressure, they just don't work. So we need to make sure that we look at the system and not only model what you have now, but slowly stack on the things that you've talked about relative to your needs, the development's needs, and make sure that it functions. It may or may not. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, well, I'm certainly not going to recommend something that's... Could it possibly you know, result in burning out people's pumps? In other words, if, there was, um, if they had a... If the head's too high, volume, volume. Yes. If the head's too high, they just burn out, period. Yeah. Like that, that, that's just never going to work. But um, I think it's fair to say that uh, pumps working a significantly amount harder over time would lead to their you know, accelerated or earlier decline. demise. Sure. sure. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's just like a car, you know, you, you beat on it enough and it won't be there for you down the road. Yeah. And just for the record now, I know the pumps that we have and the design that we have is good because all of our pumps, I at least speak for myself, my parents and close neighbors, I think everybody here, they're failing because of corrosion not the motors ne necessarily burning up. A few bearings yeah. have gone on some of them, but it's mostly corrosion, yeah, which is which is sad on. that they're designed that way that's when that's nice. their purpose yeah. is the pump switch. But I, so I, I think it's fair to say that any the project that we had in the past was done right, and we just need to make sure that this one is too. Yeah, Absolutely. they do have newer versions of those pumps. My understanding is some of you have them, the E ones versus the E one extreme. It's just a higher pressure pump. So we can can model both when we develop it. But. We have the E1s, I know that, the 2000s. Tony said something. over time, some of them, have, the old ones have been phased out. So I'm assuming over time when things have been replaced. That, 
Yeah, they could be then. Because exactly. they just replaced the guts now. So if, if the yes. inside diameter yes. is the same, like a piece of drain pipe <laughs> sideways and you know, yeah, yeah. little the bells on it. Opens up <laughs> I wish I thought of it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a quick in, quick out. Yeah. Okay. Same with the yeah. chat. Right. Is anyone else say, trust members, any questions? Because we're really grateful. Thank you very you much. Know, we really appreciate so well your taking out. the time. Thank you. Fantastic Thank taking you. the time and to be so thoughtful. Okay. No problem. That was very informative. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay. No other business coming before us? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.